If you enjoy my videos and writing, please support me by joining my Patreon community. Even if you can't contribute much, it helps to keep me going. Lunasa is celebrated on or around the 1st of August. The name connects the day to the god Lu, but the connection is a bit indirect. Irish lore tells how Lu was fostered by a woman called Talchu. She was the wife of Yaki Macerk, the king of a race called the Fir Bolg. The Fir Bolg were related to the Tua de Danon, but they had fled to Greece, where they were mistreated. In time, they decided to return to Ireland, but were not welcomed by their old kinsmen. The Tua de defeated the Fir Bolg, killing Yaki Macerk, and Talchu became a hostage. She later married to Yaki Garav of the Tua de Danon, but she's still described as being in bondage. The story goes that Talchu cleared a great wood called Kalhuin, which had been used for deer hunting until that time. After she cleared it, it was given over to grazing and agriculture. The effort required to clear this plain was so great that Talchu died of exhaustion. As she was on her deathbed, she asked her foster son Lu to institute funeral games in her honor. This is said to be how the fair and games at Telltown began. The great fair and games seems to have continued into the 12th century, but the Telltown fair didn't completely die out until the 19th century. A story similar to the one told about Talchu is also told of an obscure woman or goddess called Carmen, who, like Talchu, came from Greece. She and her three sons waged war on the Tua de Danon, pillaging and destroying crops as they went. The Tua de drove the three evil sons out of Ireland, but kept Carmen in prison as a surety against further attack from her sons. After Carmen died, a Lunas affair was held in her honor in Leinster, although the exact location is no longer known. Another Lunas affair was held at Awen Macha. This site was associated with Macha, the wife of Nevid, who was also credited with clearing land for agriculture. Another Macha, or perhaps another aspect of Macha, is the Macha famous for winning a race against King Conover's horses. This Macha appeared mysteriously in Ulster and began acting as the wife and housekeeper of a wealthy farmer called Crinje. When he went to the fair held by Conover, she told him not to speak of her, but instead he boasted that his wife could outrun the king's horses. Macha was brought to the fair and forced to run the race, despite asking to be allowed to give birth before she ran. She gave birth to twins as she crossed the finish line, then famously cried out a curse on the men of Ulster, making them unable to fight. We can reasonably assume that this story is set at Lunasa. If we look closely, all these tales have something in common. A woman, or goddess who might be considered a goddess of land or sovereignty, performing a difficult action like clearing a vast wood with an axe, or running in a race against horses while in labor, or in the case of Carmen, merely dying alone in prison. All of them are in some way under duress. They are prisoners or hostages or given no choice. This holiday was probably celebrated with similar fairs in Celtic Britain, but as Christianity and the English language became the norm there, the fairs became known as Lammas Fairs, a name which even spread to some parts of Ireland. Lammas stems from the Anglo-Saxon word for loaf mass, a Christian holiday associated with the beginning of the grain harvest. These fairs became important dates in the agricultural calendar, not only because of their associations with harvesting and celebrating the harvest, but as a date when rent was paid and contracts for employment on farms were made or renewed. Vast numbers of agricultural workers attended fairs to spend a bit of their wages, but they were also there to look for better terms of employment with a new farmer. Another kind of contractual custom was also widespread. That was the custom of the Telltown marriage. This was a custom whereby couples met at the fair to agree a trial marriage for a year and a day, which they were free to break at the following year's fair. Although this custom carried the name of Telltown in Leinster with it, it was known and practiced as far away as Kirkwall in Orkney, an island to the north of Scotland. So where does this information lead us? 
Personally, I feel that the stories of Tal Chu, Carmen, and Macha hint at the less savory side of our relationship to agriculture and the land. Agriculture seems like a great leap forward, but it was also a step toward what we now think of as the philosophy of unchecked growth. The major driving force behind expanding populations, habitat destruction, mechanization, and the violent taking of the land by one group from another. And in these three myths, it always seems to be the very female figures who represent the land who pay for the king's sovereignty over it. The fact that this information is hiding in plain sight in the stories suggests that people in earlier eras were well aware of this. Perhaps they too knew that we needed to give the problem some thought. So, while we are understandably still grateful for the produce of the land which produces our food and drink, we might want to set aside some time at Lunasa to look for solutions to the problems we have caused getting it. Or perhaps we will use the date to make new contracts or vows for the coming year.